Hey everyone, it's Professor Clark, and in this lecture we're going to go over verbs of placement and positioning. This is a list of verbs you have at the top of page 113 in your textbook, and these are verbs that are basically the equivalent of to be or to be located in a certain position or to put. Russian uh, is more precise about its verbs of placement and positioning, just as it's more precise with its verbs of motion. And so there's no equivalent of just to put. You have to indicate what position you put something in and you have to indicate what position it is in when you are discussing location. So let's take a closer look at these verbs of placement and positioning. Let's start by looking at these intransitive verbs of position or location. So remember that intransitive verbs are verbs that cannot take a direct object. And these intransitive verbs of position or location are the equivalent of to stand, to hang, and to lie. And a lot of times things in Russian don't just be somewhere, they stand, hang, or lie somewhere. And so you have to indicate what position they're in when you're talking about their location. So let's take a quick look at these verbs. You already know stayat. It's one of the O stem second conjugation verbs that we looked at earlier. And the conjugation is stayu, stayish, stayit, stayim, stayit, stayat. Notice that it is n stressed. And we could use it in sentences such as stol stayit okola divana. The table stands or the table is near the couch. Nastalia stayit televizor. A television is or a television stands on the table. Next we have visiat, to hang, and this is intransitive, so this is when something is hanging somewhere. And the conjugation is vishu, visish, visit, visim, visitia, visiat. Again, second conjugation. Note the consonant mutation in the first person singular, the ya form, but not in the other forms. So we could say things like zirkala visit nastinia. The mirror is hanging on the wall. Chisi visiat riadam zirkalam. The clock is hanging next to the mirror. And note that clock in Russian is plural. So chisi means clock or watch, and it's always plural. And last we have to lie, lijat, which again is intransitive, and it is to be in a horizontal or lying position. This is one of those husher stem second conjugation verbs. So lijou, lijish, lijit, lijim, lijit, lijat. Note that the eight-letter spelling rule comes into effect, so it is lijat with an a rather than with a ya. Some examples could be kavior lijit na palu. The rug is lying on the floor, or the rug is on the floor. Knigi lijat na polkia. The books are lying on the shelf. And books can either lie or stand. If they're standing up vertically, anistayat. If they are placed horizontally, anilijat. Now let's look at the transitive verbs of placement. And again, these are the equivalents of to put or to place, but you always have to indicate in Russian whether you are placing something vertically or horizontally or hanging it up. And these verbs of placement are verbs of motion and often take va or na plus the accusative. If you look at the examples on page 113 of the textbook, you will see that placing objects on a surface takes the accusative, while if you're arranging objects within a location, you're going to use the prepositional because they're not actually moving towards the location, they're just moving within the location. So they have, for example, Мы поставили стол и стулья в столовой. And there they are arranging the uh, table and chairs in the dining room. They didn't necessarily carry them into the dining room. They just arranged them in the dining room. We put the table and chairs in the dining room, but the emphasis is not on bringing them into the dining room, but on setting them up in the dining room. Versus мы положили ковер на пол в спальне. We laid the rug on the floor in the bedroom. And again, the bedroom, spalnya, that is prepositional because the emphasis is on the location within the bedroom. But napol is accusative because the emphasis is on motion towards the floor, on putting it down onto the floor. So let's look at these verbs of placement and their conjugation. And again, these are transitive verbs. 
So they all take a direct object. And then the location that you're moving them towards is going to be in the accusative. So to place upright or place vertically or to stand is stavits or pastavits. And the conjugation, which is the same for both, is stavlu, stavit, stavit, stavim, stavit, stavit. If it is the perfective form, you just put po in front of it. So pastavlu, pastavish, pastavit, pastavim, pastavit, ya pastavit. For example, ya pastavila knigi na polku. I put the books on the shelf and the books are upright. I stood them upright. We also have to hang up or to arrange or place by hanging. So this is the transitive form of to hang, which is vieshets pa vieshets. And so vieshets is very straightforward. It's just like chitats, vieshayu, vieshayush, vieshayet, vieshayim, vieshayet, vieshayut. And then pa vieshets is pa vieshu, pa vieshish, pa vieshit, pa vieshim, pa vieshit, pa vieshit. Notice again the consonant mutation in the ya form. So we could say, for example, Muy pavyesili chisli na stieno. Note the stress shift in the word stiena. Like many bisyllabic feminine and neuter nouns, the stress shifts from the end to the stem in the accusative singular. And if we say this, Muy pavyesili chisli na stieno, then the clock is hanging on the wall. We hung up the clock on the wall. Finally, we have to lay or to place horizontally. And that is klost polajit. This is one of those verbs where the perfective and the imperfective appear to be two different verbs. And so klost is one of these st uh, infinitive verbs where another consonant will pop up, frequently d, and that's what happens in this case. So it becomes kladu, kladiosh, kladiot, kladiom, kladiotia, kladut. Polajit becomes palaju, palojish, palojit, palojim, palojitia, palojit. Note the stress shift, so it is unstressed in the ya form and stem stressed in the other form. It follows that paradigm. And the use of the eight-letter spelling rule, so we have u in the ya form and at in the ani form because the stem is a husher. Polaju polojit. And we could say, for instance, ya polojila knigi na polku. I put the books on the shelf, but in this case, the books are lying down. They are horizontal. So this can be a little bit tricky for English speakers because we don't use this level of precision when we discuss positioning and placement, uh, but you can normally get the hang of it reasonably well. Uh, just remember, you have to think about is something standing up or is it lying down? I hope you found that helpful and enjoy your Russian.